In this video, we're finally going to start texturing using the no graph in Mari. Once you've imported your Dragon model, your setup should look a lot like mine. The only difference might be the shader network, depending on which one you choose from the drop down. Which shader you see depends on what's being used for look dev and lighting. Here, I'm using the principled BRDF shader, but you might have Arnold or V-Ray instead. You'll see it's connected to several channels. In this case, base color, specular, roughness, and bump. So these are the maps we'll export at the end of our work, ready for rendering in another application like Katana. When you're done painting, go to the Channels tab, open the Export Manager, and you'll see all your channels listed here. From here, you can export them for look dev. So before painting, let's quickly look at the viewer node system. So on your keyboard, the numbers one to nine store different view states, and you can quickly switch between them once assigned. So for example, if you select your shader node and then press one, you can assign it to that view. Then if you select your base color and press two, you can assign the two number on your keypad to that view. And now if you clear your selection, you can press one or two anytime to toggle between those views. Now, before we begin, let's just delete this extra section since we won't need it. In Mari, there are a handful of nodes you'll use in almost every project. If you're new and don't know what's available, if you press tab and then scroll down through this list, you can see what nodes are available. Or if you want something more organized and easier to understand, if you right click, go to nodes, you can browse them by type. So the first essential node is merge, shortcut is M. A merge node has three inputs, so we have base, over, and mask, and it blends the inputs together based on a mask. For example, let's create two color nodes. So this is another commonly used node. The color node simply outputs a flat color. I'll make the base color dark green, and then the over a lighter green. Another node you can use is the cloud node. Here we're gonna use it for the mask. So if we connect it to the merge's mask input, double click it, then we can tweak the pattern. So adjusting roughness makes it smoother or grittier. Um, everything in white shows the overcolor. Everything in black shows the base. And if you only need two colors blended by noise, you can skip the merge entirely. So the cloud node has a built-in color A and color B slot, uh, but using a merge gives you more control in the long run as you can blend modes, uh, change the opacity, and you also have advanced options. And also if you want to add nodes later on to the color or to the mask, you can do this separately, whereas with the cloud node, it would be a lot more difficult. So another common node is a tiled node. So this is great when you have image textures that you want to use and place onto your model. You can drag maps from the shelf. And if you don't have the right texture map, you can use websites like ambientcg.com, texturingxyz, and texturing.com are excellent sources. So attach the texture once you've found it. And then I'm using another common node, which is the grade node to increase the brightness. And then I'm going back to a tile node to tweak the U and V slider. For more complex projections, you can also use a triplanar projection node. So this projects a texture from three directions. So you have the front, top, and side. So by default, you'd have to drag an image for each section, so the front, the top, and the side. If you want them all to have exactly the same image, there's a faster method, um, which is to basically go to the image manager, load your image, and then press on shift and drag the image into the node graph to auto create a triplanar node with the images already filled in for each angle. Then you can adjust the world scale to change the size on all three directions, and then tweak the fall off to hide scenes. You can also hand paint masks. So we saw this earlier in video seven, the only difference here is the node graph. So you would create a paint node, press P, and then in the dialog, you'd choose resolution, whether it's scalar or not. So scalar is best for masks with no RGB information. And then once created, you can use the paint tool for brush strokes, and then the paint through tool to project images onto a model. So again, these two methods are not just for masks, you can use them also for the base or over input too. And if you need high quality sources for the paint through brush, those same texture websites we saw earlier work really well. In the next video, we're gonna focus on entirely procedural methods. So see you there.